Hi, and welcome back. Today we're making these wonderful boards. You can use them on your table to put hot pots on to protect your table against burn marks. If this is your first video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon so that you don't miss a single episode. So the secret to making nice boards like these is essentially the glue. -up. Most of you that have already worked with pallet wood know that pallet wood is not exactly the flattest wood around. The worst ones will twist, they'll bow, they'll cup, they'll be just about anything but flat. So running them through the planer is what I consider to be essential. If you don't have a planer, or at least an electric one, you can probably get away with a hand plane and a nice little solid workout. Or you can maybe sand them, but essentially having a nice flat gluing surface is key. Remember what happens when you use a lathe with wood that's been glued together improperly? Yeah, that could lead to a nasty surprise. I hope you're wearing a helmet or at the very least a face shield. Thank God I wasn't standing in front of the lathe at that time. Once your boards are perfectly flat, you basically have two approaches. The first approach is that you can basically take your boards, uncut, glue them up, stack them up, essentially end up with a four by four. It's an okay approach. I've done it in the past. Unless you have a really good table saw and a jointer, you're not gonna get some awesome results. Unless maybe you can cobble something together to be able to use your table saw as a jointer to get that perfect 90 degree angle. But most people don't have that. So let's go for the simpler approach. Once you've planed all your boards, cut them down in one inch wide strips on the table saw. Do that for all your board. Once you have that, take a couple of your longest clamps, or depending on how wide you want this to be, put a generous amount of glue, put them together, clamp it up, let it dry. Because you're dealing with strips, I wouldn't clamp them up too much. I mean, you don't want to go to Hulk level strength here. A nice approach also is when you have a clamp at the bottom and then a clamp on top and you repeat and alternate until you know you reach the end of the board. That way you won't have a board that looks like this. It'll be completely flat. But that's good to know. After waiting a day or two and your glue up is completely dry, then feel free to run it through the table saw. At this point, what you want to do is essentially cut it to the right dimension that you want the boards to have. You can cut them one way, you can cut them the other. In this particular case, I use a miter saw to cut it in this direction, and I use the table saw to cut it into this direction. And I have to say that I'm very happy with the results. Now, I don't call these cutting boards for a reason. Call me old fashioned, but I draw the line when it comes to cutting food, meat, fish, vegetables, just about anything that I'll put in my mouth uh, from wood that I've essentially found in a shipping yard that could have had just about anything stacked on top of it. Granted that I planed the wood, I pressure washed the wood, I cut the wood, so the wood that used to be exposed shouldn't be exposed anymore. But I guess it really depends on your comfort level. I find that these boards make an excellent gift, and so long as you inform people that it's not a cutting board, it's a serving board to use on the table. This is an incredibly simple project that you can probably make only with a table saw. The table saw is kind of mandatory, 
with you can get away with only a table saw in this particular project. Now, because these are not cutting boards, you can get away with putting any type of finish on them that you want, because food will not be in contact with it. So it's a moot point. So you want to go crazy on polyurethane? Well, as long as you don't mind touching it with your hands, you should be good to go. Mind you, a few finishes that are a bit more resistant to heat, depending on how hot the pots are going to be when you put them on top, might still be a good idea. Hope you've enjoyed the video. See you next time.